So there are tons of science curriculums out there. Some of them go really in depth on one specific subject. Some of them kind of have a broad overview of many different topics. Some of them are very hands-on, some aren't. Some take a lot of reading and prep work, some don't. So let me show you where Apologia Astronomy fits into all of this. If you're new here, I'm Ryan, a christ following wife and a homeschool mom to three boys. Here we talk all things homeschool and we will learn together how to use our roles as wife, mom, teacher, and homemaker in order to glorify God. So maybe you're looking for a new science curriculum and you're um, not really sure where to start, or maybe you've just heard of Apologia and are interested in looking into it more. This is our fourth year using Apologia actually. And this year we did the astronomy unit. So this is obviously very topical. That's how Apologia works. I can't speak for the middle school and up, but for their elementary, each year you do a different topic. And this one was obviously all about space. So some science curriculum would have you do life science. And so you would look at the human body, you would look at plants and you look at animals all in one year. That's not how Apologia works. Apologia breaks it down and you really go in depth on one specific thing. Some people love that, some people can't stand it. I happen to really love it and it works for my boys. They think it's super interesting. Now Apologia, you do read from the textbook or if you're like me, you download the MP3 and have it read for you, which is great because then I have the narrator read all of this while I make lunch and my boys eat lunch and I can be doing other things, but still listening and knowing what's going on as well. And they just follow along in this textbook so I can still see all the pictures and read along with her and see all the words in bold. And those are just important words to know the definitions of. And so for me, that part is really hands off and I love it that way. Now you will find throughout this book, many demonstrations and experiments. Now, obviously in the astronomy one, there aren't quite as many because we're talking about space. So there's only so many space experiments you can do. However, in the different books that we've done in the past, there have been tons, especially in the chemistry and physics one, there were so many different experiments and demonstrations you could do. So you will find these in the activity section. So just throughout the book, they will have activity seven point blah, 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 or depending on the lesson. And you will have to like this, they're making a community on Mars. And so there's just different things like that throughout. But I also looked out on this because I have a friend that does these experiments for my kids and it's great because then I don't have to do them. And so just recently they did, we were talking about Jupiter. And so they did a storm in a bottle to talk about the storms on Jupiter. I didn't have to mess with that. It was great. But a lot of their projects that you will find on there, they aren't that bad. They tell you step-by-step step what to do. They tell you beforehand what materials you're going to need. There's actually a supply list in the back of the book. So you can look weeks and weeks ahead and see exactly what it is you will need for that week if you want to do those experiments at home. And the good thing is if you just are not an experiment person and you do not care to do them and you don't have a friend like mine who's willing to do it for you, then I have found what I've done in the past is you can look them up on YouTube and someone out there has done something at least similar to that project and you can just watch them do it. It's great. Now the next part of this curriculum is the notebook. I know people who do this without the notebook. It is not necessary. However, I find it very helpful. That being said, I also find that if you try to do every single little thing in this notebook, you're going to get tired of it. So the first year that we did it, I did almost every single thing and I grew to hate it but it was just because it was a lot. And so these notebooks are also kind of pricey if you don't find them used and it's kind of hard to find them used because people typically write in them, but sometimes you get lucky. So what I did is I make my kids share. So we do all this stuff together. So let's say there's a crossword. So this crossword is all about the moon. So what I did is I just read the clues out loud and my boys helped me answer them. And then either I or my son will do the writing in there and we work on it together or say there is copy work. Well, it just so happens there is a cursive copy page and there's a print copy page. So I make my second grader do the print side. My fourth grader does the cursive side. There's also note taking pages. And so when they are doing the experiments and stuff with my friend, then they will just take notes and I will just glue them in here. They'll take notes on regular paper and I'll just glue them in here. Also, there are coloring pages and I'll just give the, one of them the book and the other one I will just print off an extra copy and again, cut it and paste it in here. This is really for you to use however you want it to be used. There are many books in here that you make. And so this is one we made on Venus. And so there's like the spewing lava coming out 
and it has the different um, definitions and facts about Venus in there. But for each unit or for each lesson, there is a mini book. And so we just, again, put those together, um, all together and work on it and then glue it in here. Super easy guys. You don't have to spend a ton of money on these. And then throughout there, you'll also see other projects. Sometimes I'll have a writing project or create an ad or create a newspaper article or something like that. We typically don't do those because we do a lot of writing <laughs> throughout our day. So I don't like adding more to that, but it is an option. Another thing I love about this is at the end of every lesson, they have a, what do you remember section? And so it looks like this. And there's just a set of questions that highlight the different things they should have learned by the end of the lesson. And if you haven't really been paying attention as a parent, which obviously it's better if you do, but if you haven't, guess what? All the answers are right here in the back. So you can just look up the answers if you don't know. Of course, there's an index in the back too, telling where they talk about each different thing. Another one of my favorite things about this curriculum is there's always a wisdom from above section and it uses some sort of scripture and it ties it into science, which is my absolute favorite because science just sings the praises of God. Science just truly, truly reflects who God is and shows him as a true creator and sustainer of all things. And that's what I want my kids to know. Another fun little thing that they have in here is they always have a think about this section right there. And it always has just something kind of fun and random that is cool to know. So Saturn's rings look like a wide flat surface, almost as wide as the distance between earth and moon. But you know, the truth is that they are made of millions of pieces of ice and rock. Scientists say that the rings may be the solar system's largest, largest traffic jam. So super fun and cool stuff like that. So all in all, I love, love, love Apologia and astronomy was no different. I loved it too. Now, one thing I will say is for their first through sixth grade curriculum, they say you can kind of do them in any order, depending on what sites you read. Some sites say that there is a definite order. I learned there is a definite order. Now I won't say that there's a do this, then this, then this, but there are a few of them that I would definitely save for that fourth, fifth, sixth grade and not those younger ages. However, I was going along with my co-op at the time when we first started and I didn't really have a choice. If I wanted to do it along with my co-op, I had to put my younger kiddos in that harder class. So it made things kind of tough. Um, we did our first year when my son was in first grade, we did the swimming creatures one, which was super great. We all learned a lot. Even my then pre-K kid learned a lot with that. Then we did human anatomy, which is one of those that I would wait till fifth or sixth grade. There was a lot of terminology, a lot of just in-depth stuff that I wish my kiddos would have been a little bit older to retain more of it. Then we did chemistry and physics. This one was kind of borderline, but I kind of wish I would have waited till fourth or fifth grade for that one. And then we did astronomy. So we are going to continue this next year. We'll probably pick another one of those little bit easier ones, um, either botany or land animals or flying creatures. And then if I'm finding that it's a little too easy for my son who will be in fifth grade next year, then I will just add, you know, maybe some writing assignments or projects or videos or whatever, just to kind of beef it up for him, give him some extra books to read just so that he can get a little more in depth than my third grader will be able to get. Now, if you are a major, major science person and you love science and you really, really, really want to focus on science for your kids, this astronomy book in specific would not be enough for your whole school year. Now it is for us just because science is not, I love teaching them science. It's not my favorite subject, but I do love teaching it to them. And I think it's important to know, and we do it almost every day. But if you are one of those that like are really hardcore, you may want to do two books in a year as far as the astronomy one goes. Human anatomy, no, just do that one. <laughs> but astronomy, you could maybe pair with something else um, to make it last the entire year. And then if you're a person who you don't like to go in depth really hard on one topic, you want to do kind of that broad sweep of different things like I was talking about in the beginning, Apologia might not be for you. Um, I love it and I would recommend it, but if you know that you know that you don't want to go in depth like that, you probably won't love it. So let me know down below what you use to teach your kids science or if you're looking for a new curriculum and be on the lookout on Friday. We have another really fun and crazy day in the life coming up and make sure you subscribe if you haven't already and I will talk to you next time. Bye.